Hi and welcome to my channel Geography Made Easy. We will be looking at difficult geographical concepts and trying to look at them in an easy manner. In this chapter, we will be dealing with geological evolution and structure in relationship to India. We will be learning about the terms which are very commonly used in geology and we will try to understand how geology has influenced the physiography of India. So the very first and the most important thing which we need to understand is the meaning of the term geology. Geology by itself is a different discipline from geography. So this is a science, a subject which deals with the physical structure and the substances of the earth on and beneath the surface. So basically when we are looking at geology, we look at lithosphere and below. So a geologist will be studying the different kinds of rocks, minerals and other molten substances which occur below the surface of the earth. Now this molten rocks when they solidify they form hard rocks minerals which determine the kind of landforms which we see on the surface of the earth. So a particular mountain will have a particular kind of geology which can differ from a particular plateau. In another way Geology can be simply said to be the history of the earth. So the history of the human beings inhabiting the earth is the perceived human history. The geological history of the earth is much, much older. The earth is 3.6 billion years old and we have various and different kinds of events from where the earth which was just a molten ball of lava and hot gases which solidified and formed what we see today the living planet so the geological time scale is very very different from the human time scale so the human time scale is only a few thousand years old whereas the geological time scale is billions of years old. So to simplify matters, the geological time scale is divided into primary time intervals and it is these primary time intervals are divided further into secondary time intervals. The primary time intervals are called eras and the secondary time intervals are called periods. The Indian geological names given to some of these eras are the Archeans, which are the oldest, followed by Purana, Dravidian and Aryan. Now, this naming nomenclature can be different, can differ. So, if you look at the general geological time scales, we can have, it's, we can have a different names and it can be much more complex. We will be looking at the three most important physiographic landforms of India with respect to its geology and trying to understand how the geology has helped in the evolution of the structure as we know it. So the first structure that we will be looking at is the Peninsular Plateau. Now the Peninsular Plateau occurs in the southern part or the peninsular part of India. It stretches in a tabular tapering fashion from north to south and this is more or less how it occurs. Now how did the peninsular plateau form? Plate tectonics very interestingly explains the formation of peninsular plateau. We know that the peninsular plateau was part of the Indian plate. 
so the indian plate was moving towards the eurasian plate so the eurasian plate was in the north and the indian plate was in the south and it was moving in this way from south towards north the peninsular plateau is made out of stable crystalline rocks mostly of igneous and metamorphic nature igneous rocks are hard and resistant similarly metamorphosed rocks are also hard and resistant harder and much more resistant than sedimentary rocks now where the himalayas stand today we know that there was a shallow sea called the tethys so as the indian plate kept thrusting towards the north towards the eurasian plate we see that uh, there was a depression the tethys sea which later became the himalayas this was there in the north and the south is where the the indian plate comes through we see that this stable block of stable crystalline rock forms a higher area which is rigid and inflexible and they are forming what we know as the plateau the peninsular plateau has not received much movements and hence we have not seen much mountain building or orogenic features in this area however certain parts of the peninsular plateau has seen some faulting especially in the western part so there are block faults which form very interesting step like features which we know as the deccan trap in the northwestern part of the deccan plateau so this is the geological history behind the deccan plateau next we move on to the most important geological landform which has a very interesting geological history which is the himalayas or the himalayan mountain chains this theory is best explained with the help of the theory of plate tectonics the plate tectonics talks about the lithosphere being divided into plates or blocks which move over the plastic asthenosphere now these plates have different kinds of density depending upon the material which makes these plates if we have oceanic plates they are heavier if we have continental plates they are lighter the first theory or the older theory does not really talk about the plate tectonics theory but it keeps in mind about the geosyncline or which is the shallow sea which forms or which is there in between the indian plate and the eurasian plate which we saw in the previous slide when we were talking about the peninsular plateau geosynclines are shallow seas which occur in certain parts and since uh, they are seas sediments washed down from the plateau from the plain area gets deposited on the bed of the sea and forms sedimentary rocks so here we see this is the south and this is the north and this is the way in which actually the plates are moving the indian plate is moving towards the eurasian plate but and this is the shallow sea this is the geosyncline this is the tethys so in this case we will see that what happens is with the thrusting of the indian plate and the eurasian plate we see that the sediment which got deposited at the bottom of the sea it buckles up from both the sides under pressure this is something very similar 
you will be able to see if you uh, on your bed sheet if you are exerting pressure from both sides you will see that the cloth will fold and will buckle up so the himalayan mountains are fold mountains they have a shape which is something like this so they are folded mountains and this fold is caused when you have a force coming from both the sides and the mountain chains buckle up and they form the himalayas so this is what was best explained with the help of the geosyncline theory this is the tethys exactly what i have been talking about the two plates moving towards one another however now we will be looking at the other theory which is the plate tectonic theory where again we see that the indian plate and the eurasian plate are moving towards one another but as i was discussing that plates have different densities depending on the material which makes it up now these are two continental plates but the heavier plate usually sinks below because it is more dense it sinks below the lighter plate and in this case we see that the indian plate is heavier than the eurasian plate the rocks of the indian plates are much more dense their composition is denser compared to the eurasian plate so there might be more igneous and crystalline metamorphic rocks in the indian plates which leads to its heavier density compared to the eurasian plate which might be composed of lighter material more sedimentary rocks so this difference creates different types of rock densities and the indian plate finally subsides below the eurasian plate and this pressure leads to the buckling up of the sediments or the folding up of the sediments in the tethys sea the tethys sea ultimately drains out because of the buckling up and we see that the himalayas have formed this is the diagram which properly shows as to how the himalayas have formed so this is my indian plate which has thrust below the eurasian plate and we see that the pressure has created the himalayas to buckle up in the initial days when the himalayas were forming it there was volcanic eruptions but because the supply of the magma slowly uh, was cut off we do not see any active volcanoes on the himalayas at the present moment but during its formation himalayas did have volcanoes so that is how what is represented through these smoke columns which are coming up so this is a more acceptable theory now and this is how the geological history of the himalayas can be simply explained last but not the least we have the northern or the great plains the northern plains on one side flanked by the deccan plateau on the south and flanked by the himalayas or the northern mountains on the north is a shallow area is a is a is a depression where we see sediments getting deposited over time as the rivers erode the plateau and the mountains this over time the sediments keep accumulating and with time we see huge accumulations of sediments forming the northern plain so comparatively the geology of the plains is simpler to understand so this is the diagram which shows how the plains of north india have formed with time it has stabilized it has the shallow area has got filled up with lot of sediment and it has formed a plain so now let us come to the most important questions which can come from this chapter for the iisc exams 
the first and the most important thing is in the past previous year questions also sometimes they have asked about how the himalayas peninsular plateau or the northern plains have formed when we write the answer for this chapter we try to incorporate simple diagrams like i have drawn into our answer that is going to help us score better whenever the external examiner who is examining our copies sees a diagram that person is firstly very attracted to the answer visually and secondly it becomes very clear to the person that the candidate the person who is writing the paper has understood the subject and it is very important to you know understand geography and not just plainly mug it up apart from this the geological eras and their duration the four indian names especially this can also come as a short question so these things i think should be taken care of when preparing for this chapter so i have come to the end of my presentation so if you have any doubts and questions if you want to ask me any questions please feel free to leave a comment in the chat section and i will get back to you soon until then enjoy geography and happy reading and have a nice day and please do not forget to click on the subscribe button and if you have found this video useful do share it with your friends and spread the word that geography can be made easy bye